Okay. In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive this EMD F7 locomotive in Santa Fe livery. The EMD F7 is a 1,500 horsepower diesel electric locomotive built between 1949 and 1953. In this F7 formation, there are A unit and B unit F7 locomotives. A unit locomotives are equipped with cabs, and B units are cab less locomotives that can be added as needed for additional power. More than 2,000 A unit F7s were produced, and nearly 1,500 B units. These remained in service for many decades, as they were very economical to maintain. When you're ready to begin, climb aboard. Sit in the engineer's seat. Now you'll go through the steps needed to take over this locomotive. Firstly, you will need to set the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the throttle to control the power of the train. Uh, set the transition handle to the series parallel setting so the throttle will work correctly. Set the unit selector to match the number of powered vehicles at the front of your train. In this case, set it to four. Now, the purpose behind this selector is complex, and the exact way it works is beyond the scope of this training module. Uh, simply set it to the correct value when you get into the cab, and it'll do the rest for you. This locomotive requires the reverser handle to be inserted before operation. Uh, the reverser determines the direction of travel. Uh, switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. Turn the gauge lights on so that you can clearly see the gauges. Ensure the rotor valve is set to the freight setting. When getting moving, it's worth remembering the following sequence. Independent on, auto off, throttle on, independent off. Let's go through that slowly and understand why. First, fully apply the independent brake. Now, this will ensure that regardless of anything else, your train won't move. Next, fully release the automatic brake. This will release the brakes on the rest of the train, but you won't go anywhere because those independent brakes are holding you. Now apply a small amount of throttle and verify that power is generated. Finally, Release the independent brake, and you'll start moving. This is a great practice to get used to, because it'll help you with two key areas. The first is that you verify that the train will take power before you release the brakes. You don't want to find yourself without power and having to hurriedly put the brakes back on. Uh, the second is that having power applied as you release the independent brakes ensures that you won't roll backwards. On steeper hill starts, you may even need to start with more power. And this is something you can practice and get used to as you find yourself out on the railroad. 
Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Come to a stop in the indicated position using the independent brake. Independent brakes apply only to the locomotives in the formation and are much faster to apply and release than the automatic brake, which operates on the entire train. Change direction with a reverser, then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. Before proceeding, check the two couplers are in the right position to allow for automatic coupling. Look at the rear coupler on your train and ensure it's open. Operate the cut bar if it is closed to release it. Next, walk over to the freight cars you're going to couple to and check their coupler knuckle is open too. Operate the cut bar here to open the knuckle. Before coupling cars, always check the knuckles are open, or you'll just bounce right off.
Okay. The junction is correctly aligned and the cars are ready to couple. They couple up to the cars by gently driving into them at a slow speed. And most freight uses automatic knuckle couplers, so they will automatically couple once they connect. speed is too high, you risk derailing when coupling. Apply some brakes to slow your approach. Hey, nice work. Now change direction with a reverser and move the train forward into the indicated siding. Remember to apply a little power before releasing brakes. While it's not strictly necessary in the training center, this is the time to start forming great habits. Since you have freight cars coupled, you should slow down using the automatic brake and get the extra braking effort from those freight cars. The automatic brake applies brakes throughout the entire train.
uncouple the cars either by using the external camera or by walking to the cars on foot. That's it for this training module. 